Hello everyone, uh, so today we are going to look at a poem called The Ant and the Cricket. But before we begin the poem, let us first discuss what is a fable, right? So what's a fable? A fable is normally a story which conveys a moral lesson. Now, this one is clear, right? Every story normally has a moral lesson in it, which is also known as the theme of the story. But here... The main characters are normally animals. Okay, so in a fable, our main characters are normally, normally or often animals, and these animals convey us a moral lesson. Convey means it gives us, it tells us a moral lesson. So I guess you know what a fable is. Now let's move on to the poem. So the ant and the cricket. Now this one is particularly an adapted version of Aesop's fable, right? So adapted means it has been changed and then there has been modifications and alteration in it. So let's move forward to the very first stanza. It says, A silly young cricket accustomed to sing through the warm, sunny months of gay summer and spring began to complain when he found that at home his cupboard was empty and winter was come. So in this particular stanza what you find is you find a description of a young cricket so there is this cricket who is silly and young silly here means refers to stupid okay so the a young stupid cricket was there and that cricket was accustomed to sing that means accustomed means used to singing right it always sings and it has the habit to sing a lot when through the warm sunny months of gay and summer spring so he the cricket sang all through the summer and spring, which was gay because it was sunny months and gay here means happy and joyful period of time. So in the joyful period of time, the cricket used to sing because he was accustomed to it. Then he began to complain when, when he found that at home, at his home, his cupboard was empty and winter was come. So when summer and spring had gone and when winter came then uh, the cricket started complaining because his cupboard was empty and he found nothing at home so these are some of the questions that can help you you can take a pause here and think of the answer next not a crumb to be found on a snow covered ground not a flower could he see not a leaf on a tree oh what will become says the cricket of me so here what you find is now the cricket because he found his cupboard empty he is now looking at his house and around his house and what did he see is he did not find a crumb okay a crumb is not found there where on the snow covered ground so because it was winter the ground was covered with snow the snow had fallen and it was covered all white not a flower could he see he could not see flowers as well because of the snow and not a leaf on a tree these all descriptions simply shows that it was winter and the snow was heavy and thick and therefore uh, there was no sign of any greenery or any life Oh, what will become, says the cricket of me. And when he say, oh, right, he is showing regret. He is showing an expression of sadness and sorrow here. So crumb means small piece of food, like crumbs of bread. It's an example, right? Okay. Now, you can take a pause here and try to think of the answers to the questions. At last, by starvation and famine made bold, all dripping with wet and all trembling with cold, away he set off to a miserly end to see if to keep him alive he would grant him shelter from rain and a mouth full of grain. So now the cricket decided something, right? He decided that he will visit. And he set off. Set off means he would go. He will begin a journey and to meet a miserly ant. Miserly is an is an adjective used for uh, someone who rarely uh, spends money. Right? What happened at the last is because of starvation, because of hunger, 
right it made him bold it made him courageous and in that winter season when it was all dripping with wet the snow was were falling down and it was rainward there as you can see it in the picture and because it was cold he was trembling trembling means shaking and then he decided to uh, move towards the miserly end why because to see if the miserly end would grant grant means to give right give so the miserly end will give him shelter shelter means home from rain stay from rain and a mouthful of grain so grain here refers to food so he needed food and he needed a home to say to stay safe from the heavy snowfall and rainfall okay i hope this one is very really clear now we have some questions here and i want you to take pause and think of the answers He wished only to borrow, he would repay it tomorrow. If not, he must die of starvation and sorrow. Says the end to the cricket, I'm your servant and friend, but we ants never borrow, we ants never lend. So now the cricket came there with a wish to only borrow. To borrow means he wants to take something from someone for a short period of time. Okay, he will give it, he will return it later because he said he would re repay. Repay means he would re uh, uh, make this payment again tomorrow because if he doesn't get any food or any shelter, he must die of starvation. Starvation means hunger, suffering of hunger and sorrow. Sorrow means unhappiness. Okay, now when he reached there and he asked to borrow, the ant said to the cricket that, yeah, I am your servant and your friend, my dear cricket, but we ants never borrow, we ants never lend. Well, borrow means when you give someone, when you give someone uh, something for a short period of time and lend means when you take something from someone for a short period of time. Okay, so this was the principle, right? The... Uh, the fundamental belief of ants that they do not borrow and they do not lend. So they neither borrow they nor, nor they lend. So here we come with another Q&A session and I want you to take a pause, pause the video and think of the answer. But tell me dear cricket, did you lay nothing by when the weather was warm? Quote the cricket, not I. My heart was so light that I sang day and night, for all nature looked gay. Now here, the cricket was asked a question by the ant. He said, Dear cricket, the ant, ant say, Did you lay nothing by when the weather was warm? So when the weather was warm means during summer and spring, what did you do? Did you save nothing? Lay nothing here means save nothing. Did you save nothing? Like did you, did you not save food and grain to eat? Did you not make your shelter properly? Quote the cricket said, right? Old English of said. The cricket said, not I. He did not lay safe, not he did not save anything because he, my heart was light. His heart was light and mood was happy. And because of that, he sang, the cricket sang day and night because all the nature looked gay. So gay here refers to happiness. Uh, in summer and spring, the nature looks very happy because uh, the sun shines brightly and uh, clear, the sky is clear with blue color and bright blue and blue, uh, dark blue all around. And uh, it's not cold. There's no struggle, no hardship. So he sang all the day, right? The cricket. We have some questions. I wanted you to pause the video, think of the answers. You sang, sir, you say, go then, says the ant, and dance the winter away. So these words are spoken by the ants, right? Because the, now the ants were not happy hearing the response from the cricket. The cricket actually saved nothing during good time. And now when the bad time occurs, when winter has come, he's asking for help. And because of that, the ants say that, okay, if you keep... you. Okay, you said that you had been singing, right, in the summer and spring. Now, when the winter comes, I want you, right, the ants want the cricket to dance and make sure the winter goes away, right. So, the question is, do you think the word dance is appropriate here, right? Normally, we say move away, go away, right? You, we say go away, 
What about dance away? So dance is this word appropriate? Appropriate means suitable, relatable. Okay, appropriate. Thus ending, he hastily lifted the wicket, and out of the door turned the poor little cricket. Folks call this a fable. I'll warrant it true. Some crickets have four legs and some have two. Now this is the last stanza of the poem, and here it says, "Thus, thus means therefore, was so let your chesang let." Therefore, ending, he hastily lifted the cricket. Hastily means quickly and hurriedly. When you do something very quickly, he hurriedly lifted the wicket which is inside the house, and out of the door turned the poor little cricket. So the poor little cricket was waiting at the door and asking for help to the ants. Now the ants pushed him away and rejected him that by saying that we ants neither borrow nor we lend. Okay. Folks, folks means common people. So common people call this a fable, right? We discuss what a fable is. So they say that this is just a fable. It's a story created by a human being. But the author says, "I will warrant it true." Warrant means he will guarantee you. He'll give you guarantee that this is a true story. This is not a fable, because some crickets have four legs. Some crickets means the insects. Normally, all the insect crickets have four legs, and some have two. Now here some have to are referred to human being. There are human beings who are as lazy as the cricket that we have just seen, and because of that they face struggle and problem later in their life. So the overall message of the story is we should work hard. Now the, there are some questions. You can pause the video again and think of the answers. <laughs> So the essence of the poem. The essence means the main important thing of the poem is. It is the author is conveying on or telling us the moral lesson that when we are young, we must spend our time working and planning for the future. Now that all the listener here must be a student, right? You all are students. So what is your main job? Your main job is to study now and learn the subjects that. You are taught. So, if you don't spend your time studying now, then what will happen is, you will not be ready for your future. Now, the cricket enjoyed sunny moment of summer and spring, right? We know that when the nature looked gay, he sang song because he was accustomed to it and did not think of cold and difficult moments of winter. He was not aware that winter will come, and when winter will come, he was not planning for uh, saving grains and making shelter for himself. Now the ants, on the other hand, was occupied all through the summer and spring. Now ants are like hardworking students who are occupied. Occupied means busy. They were busy studying and learning subjects all through summer and spring. Means all through the good times, collecting food for winter and storing it safely. So they had been learning. They had been doing their homework. And at last, when the exam comes, the ants, the hardworking students, can easily pass the test. While on the other hand, the crickets, the lazy student, they face struggle because they have not been doing homework on time. They have not been learning properly. So when the winter comes, when the exam comes, what happens is they face problems, right? So the essence is, you should be a person who can have far sightedness, uh, far have who can have far sightedness. Far sighted means who can look. Far away, right? Who just do not think about one day or two days, right? Who a person who can think of like one year or two years, right? He knows what will come later. So you should be a person like that. You should be a student who knows that difficult time will come and who should be start, uh, who should start preparing for such difficult time from now onwards, right? So we should not waste our time. That's the overall message, and then there are some questions below in your poem, and you can uh, try to come up with answers to this question. Yeah, so that's it. In case you find this uh, lesson interesting, make sure you hit the like button. Thank you, everyone, and.